In this Grasshopper tutorial and with the Pufferfish plugin, I want to show you how you can use this uh, mesh boolean twisted boxes to produce a series of box based on a mesh. So you can see we have a mesh and then we have these results which we can rotate those boxes. Uh, I'm going to explain in this tutorial and you can see that we can set this to any uh, kind of mesh. So you can download this uh, example file from our website and I'm going to start this from scratch. So what we want to do is to uh, use these meshes to get started. So I'm going to go to the Parms menu and in the geometry section we have this mesh. So I'm going to set this here and I'm going to use the bifocals plugins uh, so you can see the commands. I'm going to set this to one of these meshes and let's start it from here and I'll make a copy from this so you can see the results and hide this. Okay. So if you go to the Pufferfish plugin uh, and install that, if you don't have the Pufferfish, uh, Pufferfish plugin, you can download it from our website or from the Food for Rhino website. And if we then go to the Twisted Box section, we're going to use two tools to reach those boxes. The first one is the Twisted Box Array. Let me just zoom in. And this is going to make us an array of Twisted Boxes, which we finally delete those boxes inside the mesh by using this one, the mesh boolean twisted boxes. So we're going to use these two tools to get the result. Okay, let's get started by going to the uh, twisted box array and that means that we need a box which it's going to divide into the parameters x, y and z to produce those twisted boxes. For example, if I give this a box uh, let's assume that this is the box and I'm going to give that to the input. Uh, just turn this off. You can see it's going to divide it for the default is from 0, 0 0.2, 5, 7 and to 1. So it's going to divide that in the x direction, right? So it's going to be 0 to 1. Uh, let me just type this so you can understand what's happening here. So this is 0 and this is 1, and it's going to divide that into these numbers. So 0, 25%, 0 0.5, 75%, and then the 1. It's also in the y and the z direction. So what we want to do is to find a bounding box for this mesh, and you can type this by double-clicking here and typing BB, so it's the bounding box, or you can go to the surface, and find it here in the primitive, the bounding box. Okay, I'm going to give this to the mesh and it's going to uh, find a bounding box based on the XY plane. So the default is in the XY plane and this is how it's going to give us the bounding box. So what we want to do is to uh, have some control on this box and we can do that by changing the direction of the plane. I'm going to give this an XY plane, uh, but rotate that in different directions. So I'm going to rotate that three times. Uh, the first one for the rotate 3D is to rotate this XY plane which is uh, on the 0, 0 coordinates. So the center is fine. I'm not going to change that number. Uh, okay, let's see here. And we're going to give that an Z, X and a Y axis. So if I just give this an a Z axis and right click on the angle and make it degrees uh, make that from 0 to 90 degrees and give this to the plane. Uh, you can see that I can rotate this in the Z direction, okay? So this is one of the ways we can change the box. Now we can also rotate this. Let's just bring this forward and I'm going to use the control key to delete that. Again, another rotation. It's going to rotate that plane on the same center with the X axis this time. And again with a 0 to 90 degrees. So if I give that to the plane, you can see that we can also control the X direction. And finally, we can give that another rotation, this time in the Y axis again from 0 to 90 and give the final results to the plane. So this was the first step to make a box which we can rotate. So this is in the Z direction, the X direction, 
and the y direction, right? We can also give that zero to the x and the y, and only rotate that in the z direction if we want to make boxes. Maybe it's a series of boxes for the buildings, uh, for architectural purposes. So I'm going to give that uh, to the box we want to make that. Okay. The next step is that I want to make this a number slider which will define the resolution of the mesh, okay? Because we're going to delete those boxes afterward with the pufferfish twisted box, mesh boolean twisted boxes, right? It's really easy. So what I want to do is to say how can we define a one number slider to define the resolution of the x, y, and the z direction. So assume that I say from 5 to 30 is the resolution. I'm going to name that resolution and we want something so it's going to make that uh, divide from 0 to 1 uh, okay I'm going to make a range we have talked that before so I'm going to put up a tutorial which is related to this up here and uh, let's assume that the default is 0 to 1 I'm going to give that to the steps so it's going to divide from 0 to 1 into five steps, which is six numbers. I'm going to give that to the x direction. And you can see that I'm going to control the resolution in the x direction. Okay, this number should also give us a good uh, distribution for the y and the z uh, numbers. How can we control that based on the edges of this box? So we have a simple box method on the mesh. I'm going to go to the surface and use this deconstruct brep to deconstruct the box it's going to give us the edges you can see we have 12 edges uh, and in the set section we have the list item we have talked about this we can extract things from with list item i'm going to extract the edges the first edge is like in the x direction maybe that's going to use the first one and the next one is in the y direction and if we zoom in and put a plus which will reverse the edges because if I just add it up it's going to go like this and we have to find the number of the edges here so a trick we can use is to go back and find this edge which is in the z direction so these are the curves I'm going to go to the params menu and a uh, way we can find the length is to connect a number to it so let's just connect a number to the z direction x direction and the y direction okay now how can we define this resolution uh, to the y and the z direction i'm going to go to the math and use this division to divide it so let's assume that this is the y right uh, if we divide the length of this to the x we can find a multiplication for that. So I'm going to say divide y by x. It's 0 0.5 times the x direction. And then we're going to multiply that with the resolution. So I'm going to multiply that with the 10. And then if I give that again a range, and this, this step is going to be 6. So instead of 10, it's going to be 6. And this is the technique you can use to define the y and the x. You can see it's a near box distribution. We can't uh, exactly have a box, but we can have dimensions near a box there. Okay, so now let's assume to divide the z direction in the x direction. You can see it's about two times that. So I'm going to say two times the resolution. Again, a range which we want to divide, so it's going to be divided by 22 and give that to the z direction. That's how uh, you can use the twisted box array to make a simple resolution. As you can see, we can increase or decrease that. Maybe we can just say from 2 to 12 is fine. And now we can see that I can increase or decrease the resolution. Okay, now we have the boxes and the twisted boxes. If I bake that, you can see these are the twisted boxes which we uh, have on the mesh. We have to get rid of those boxes outside the mesh. So I'm going to go to the Pufferfish plugin, twisted, and use this mesh boolean twisted boxes. So let's just get that here. 
Those are the twisted boxes. The mesh, which is going to delete those things, is this mesh. I'm going to give that to the input. And the Boolean type is, as you can see, uh, the true will trim away the twisted boxes outside of the mesh, which we want, and that's fine. We're going to keep that on the true. And the keep type is 0, 1, and 2. You can see it has a complete halfway and a partial. So what I want to do is to give a number slider from 0 to 2 and check this out. If I turn off everything, turn off the boxes, you can see that this is the 0, the 1, which is partial. It's sitting on uh, the mesh and the 2 is, uh, I guess it's halfway, partial, halfway. And you can see by changing these numbers, you can get a good results. Maybe we just need 1 and 2 because 0 is not good for the distribution. So I'm going to use 1 or 2 for that. Okay, we have to increase the resolution so we get better results. I'm going to increase the resolution. And now you can see that we have these boxes. Remember, we can rotate the boxes here. So this is really easy to rotate that based on how we can we want those boxes to be. We can rotate that in the y direction. Maybe you want to use it for another purpose, right? And in the x direction. So it's basically in any direction you want. But if I want to make that for an architecture purpose, I'm going to put that from 0, 0, 0, and the z direction is going to be rotated. Maybe we just want to put that 0, 2. You can see those are the boxes we want to use. Okay, so now we have the results. That's the trimmed. Okay, now what I want to do is to uh, make this a simple mesh. So I'm going to go to the mesh section and utility, use the simple mesh tool. That's going to help us to make that a complete simple mesh. It's finally a box. You can see it here. And what we want to do is, if I just bake this, you can see those are the boxes that has been produced by the simple mesh method okay now what we need here is to make this into one uh, whole mesh i'm going to go to the viverbird plugin and use this uh, viverbird join meshes and weld which is up here and give that to here and say weld set boolean to true so you can see that the meshes is going to go to one mesh which is like this this is the final results with 600 vertices and 1000 faces. Okay, that's going to be the final results. Just bake that. And you can see that this is the final mesh we have here. Okay, now if we want to give that a frame and a window, we can simply go to the Viverbird plugin and use this uh, frame, picture frame, and window up here to make that. So I'm going to use this one. They have the same mesh input, and we have to give this a same distance. So I'm going to give that maybe a one number for the distance. Remember, you can change the uh, insert type by percent or parallelogram. So just check that out for your projects. And now, if I just increase that maybe to 30, okay, based on your project, we have to see. Uh, these in colors. So I'm going to go to the display and we'll finish the tutorial by giving this a custom preview. So let's just give this a custom preview and turn everything off. Everything is off. We can just type swatch. It's a color swatch and I'm going to give that maybe a black so we can see the frames and maybe these are the windows. So I'm going to give that a blue color okay we can also just give that opacity okay so now you can see that by decreasing this I'm going to change the frames and make this beautiful boxes outside uh, this mesh so I just converted this mesh into boxes and use that frame to get the results you can see how beautiful it is inside that and you can just Bake this if you want to and have it here. That's it. Now we can use it. You can also, if you want to make it a smooth one, uh, you can use, but it's not for this tutorial, but you can use that Weaverbird Catmore Clocks of Division on this, maybe level 
uh, smoothing that to two and bake that so you can see the results you can give that smooth meshes like this okay so remember you can also combine that with other uh, components of the Viva Virtu uh, plugin so that was the way you can use this simple method with the Pufferfish plugin and uses a twisted box array and mesh boolean twisted boxes to make that and finally we can just change the meshes if we want to we can give this rabbit to it and also change the resolution remember you can rotate this let's just turn this off uh, you can rotate this boxes it's going to make it a little bit slow so maybe i just give this a 30 degrees and now we can see it's not connected here so i have to increase the resolution maybe increase that to uh, 18 so remember you have to also change the resolution or you can also uh, play with this uh, keep type remember you can use that one or two or if you want to even zero if you want to change the keep type that's going to give us more boxes so it's going to be like that okay and maybe for structural reasons it's going to be also a good uh, overall results if you want to make that for structural sections okay that was a tutorial of how you can make a mesh into boxes with the pufferfish plugin and also using the viva plugin to uh, make those frames and uh, windows as you can see here uh, thanks for watching remember to subscribe to our channel and like this video and comment below what do you think about the results uh, are they useful uh, perhaps you can use that for architectural buildings or maybe you just want to uh, put that in other uh, sections of designs and use the results. Okay, thanks for watching and see you next time.